Hi, my name is Ken Lee. I am a senior storage engineer here at NetApp. I work in NetApp IT Customer One program. The program is designed to deliver early insights on NetApp products and services. We also share our experience, best practice, and lessons learned with our customers. My presentation is the story of how NetApp IT started the journey with Storage Grid and the decisions that we made along the way, starting with version 10 of Storage Grid to what we have today. This is our Storage Grid timeline. We started with version 10 in May of 2015 as part of a Customer One initiative. The best way to dip your toes into Storage Grid is with static or archival data. For us, it was our SOX compliance net backup environment. Like most shops, data from net backup goes to tape with vaulting and an offsite location. We started running tape parallel with our storage grid from January to October of 2016, and then stopped tape backups completely and became a tapeless environment. The next application to move into our grid was active IQ flat files, large static files, and within six months, it consumed 600 terabytes of storage. In May of 2018, version 11 was released, and it had big changes and much needed improvements. That is when an application named Authenticated File Upload, NAFU, decided to use Storage Grid as their backend storage because it met their requirements. We created a new DMC storage grid and put NAFU in it, and we went live on October 2018. Because of that success, we created a grid in Amsterdam in March of 2019, and then the final phase of the project was to leverage AWS S3 in Sydney. This is what our storage grid environment looks like today. We have three production grids. The first one is in our corporation grid, which is only accessible from internal network within NetApp. It spans three sites, 11 nodes in Sunnyvale, 24 nodes in RTP, Raleigh, North Carolina, and 20 nodes in HIO, Hillsboro, Oregon. We are using VM gateways as the endpoint. For the internal DMC, it is a two-site grid this, is, this gives us 10 nodes in RTP, nine nodes in HIO. Instead of using a VM gateway, we started using the F5 load balancer for the endpoints. Amsterdam is a much smaller grid. It is a single site grid and is also in a DMC with just six nodes. It is also using the F5 load balancer. NetApp Authenticated File Upload, NAFU. This is the application which drove our storage grid growth and direction. The goal of NAFU was to allow customers to upload any type of files with a maximum size of 800 gigabytes and eventually becoming the premier method of choice for all file uploads within NetApp. The list of requirements is shown here, which I will go through each individually. Was, bet, was met by using Storage Grid. Some of you might recognize this application GUI interface. This meets the first two requirements, the browser and core is capable. Customer no longer needed to install any upload software. For large file data transfer, to get good upload performance, you either have to have a large network pipe or you run parallel upload sessions. Large network has large costs and we wanted to avoid that. Multi-part upload was very important to the application team. With multi-part upload, everything is taken care of. Breaking a single file into multiple chunks, uploading those chunks in parallel from the client, auto restartability for chunk failures, and then putting the chunks back into a single object store. In the center of this slide is our core storage grid. That grid is housed within our internal core network and our security folks 
would not allow us to use that grid for internet facing activities. Therefore, we had to create a DMZ grid, but the problem was our support team is in the corp network. The storage grid platform service, CloudMira, allows us to move the uploaded data from the DMZ grid into our corp grid. This is what the NAFU application looks like. It is using an F5 load balancer endpoints to either HIO or RTP. Storage grid in the DMZ will transfer the data to the court grid and from there to the engineering domain. There are two items that this slide is not saying. One is that Amsterdam grid came later. After the successful implementation in the US, we were still getting slow uploads from our Europe customers because of the distance to the United States. Therefore, we installed the Amsterdam grid. Some of you experts in storage grid might question why we did not extend the DMZ grid to include Amsterdam as a site. Well, NetApp has a very small network pipe from Amsterdam to the United States. We were worried about the metadata. As you grow the grid to a lot more nodes, each site needed to have metadata about all the other nodes. This chattiness of small packets of metadata going back and forth on a very, very low bandwidth network could cause services to queue up within Storage Grid and cause issue for the grid itself. Therefore, we chose to create a separate independent grid. The second item that this slide did not show is another requirement from our application team, which is notification service. As you can guess, when a file is uploaded, how do we know the multi-part upload or for that matter, that the file was successfully uploaded into the grid. An old method would be for a program to consistently check to see if the file is available, but that is not very efficient. This is where notification feature of storage grid comes in. We configure a bucket to send notification to Amazon Simple Notification Service, SNS, so that when a file completed is uploaded, a message is sent to AWS. AWS SNS will push that message to any subscriber, which will be a NAFU program, and then will trigger the next process. There you have it. Most of the features available in Storage Grid used by NAFU application. Some customer in Europe were still experiencing slow uploads unless they were near Amsterdam and we were back to the original problem, slow upload speed. Because the backend storage is object storage, NAFU should be able to connect to any object storage with little or no modification. This is where AWS S3 object storage comes in. What we did was we spun up an AWS S3 in Sydney and pointed the application endpoints to AWS and start uploading files into AWS S3. In the US, we would also spin up an AWS S3 instance as a target storage. In this way, we would use AWS Backbone Network to move the uploaded files from Sydney into AWS East, and from AWS East, we use CloudSync to move the files into our core storage grid. Within AWS, we don't leave the data there. Once it has been moved, we delete the files to keep costs down. Now, we can scale this AWS solution to get closer to our largest customer if needed with minimal changes to the application. Phase one of the project was to create the application using Storage Grid. Phase two of the project was to expand the application to Amsterdam, our Europe customer. Phase three was to find a method to provide the same upload speed regardless of location. So far, we can upload in Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, in many, many more locations. When ONTAP object storage becomes available in Cloud ONTAP, we as customer one will look into replacing AWS S3 with Cloud ONTAP S3. Key takeaways. How you can start small with static or archival data and evolve storage grid using an FY five load balancer for endpoint high availability, 
and use AWS S3 backbone to transfer data and then use CloudSync to migrate that data back onto on-prem storage grid. This is our journey, and I hope you find it useful or at least give you ideas of how to use storage grid. Thank you for your time.